Close your eyes, I'm moving the camera. It's so silly that the YouTube version, the view from YouTube is different than if I wanted to start a video. So I can never get it done ahead of time. I hope that looks good for everybody. I brought in an extra light today, so we are super lit up. Let's see what we can see. For those that are watching the replay, it's only five minutes of three. It took me a little bit to find all the pieces today. No, I did not prepare ahead of time. Why would you think I would do something silly like that? Come on. Whoop. This new chair makes a clunking sound, so you might hear that every now and then. Let me refresh my page. If I'm live or I'm just talking to myself, let's see what happens. I tried to find a chair that was super quiet, but apparently they're, they don't make desk chairs that are quiet. They start out quiet for the first week and then they get loud. Can you see me now? Can you see me now? My internet has, I feel like I say this all the time, I have Xfinity now, which is amazing, but oh, look, there I am, I'm live. But Xfinity's been getting a little crazy lately. Let's see if we can see the chat. I'd like to zoom in a little bit. I always want to put the camera somewhere different, cool, and rainy. Mm. Oh, look, I did. We are supposed to get rain. There we go. Oh, like Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, it rained. It rained last night, I believe. It was really nice. Hello, everybody. Hello, hello. Oh, look at all the people there. It's amazing what happens when you hit refresh. Now, remember to make sure you click on the little button where it says live chat so that you're, you're on live chat and not top chat. Just for anyone who is not used to, right here above the chat, it says top chat. If you hit that little down arrow, you want to make sure you click on live chat. That way you see it as people are talking and you're not missing out on things. This is what we are working on today, the small sewing box. Again, I didn't plan anything. I did prepare my fabric about an hour ago and I spent the last 10 minutes looking for the little corner pieces because I put them somewhere safe where I wouldn't lose them. I don't even know where I found them, but I found them and that's all that matters. 10 minutes ago and I can't remember where I found them. Hi, we'll be here until dad is ready for his lunch. I need to help him with the new microwave. All right, Jackie, we will be here. I no guarantees, but I don't think we're going to do anything too exciting while you're gone. I hope Dad has a good lunch. Let's see, who do we have here today? Jackie, Dolores. Thank you, Dolores. I made it. Uh, sometimes it takes so long to get everything to refresh that you're like, am I live? Am I talking to myself? I don't know. Tessa, Cheryl, Quilted Brownie, Robin's Quilt Basket, Sharon Gardner. Ken and Leslie, hello, hello. This is the last kit, but I really want to do more of this. Now in May, we're going to be doing the art quilts. I, I don't want, I don't know if I can squeeze it into my schedule to go live. You would think that lives take less than the recorded videos and they do and they don't. I'd like to go live more often, but then I don't know. But after we do some art quilts, we might do a little bit more extra lives to do a little bit more with art quilts. I want to go back and start making more of these. Hi, Gwenny. Hi, Sharon. I want to make more of the different notebooks and stuff. I think that might be really fun for the quilters that have, or the people that are sewing that have some scraps and they want to be able to use them up, but they don't want to make another quilt or a pillow. Live chat makes it so much easier. I wasn't going to wear my little cuff, 
but then my bracelet was dangling, jangling and making noise. So I decided to put it on anyways. In the summer, it's a little bit harder to wear because it does heat up my wrist, which makes my hands warm. Oh, let's see, Sharon King. Where did Sharon King say she's at? <laughs> From Australia. Oh, yeah, she's really in a totally different day. Australia, it, it's got to be late or early in the morning or something. 5 a.m. on Saturday. Ooh. Sharon, thank you so much for being up bright and early and hanging out with us. I have no idea how this is going to go if you were here the last time. Reading directions and figuring it out while chatting live is not, you know, my forte. I can make things up. I can just say, okay, here's some cardboard. We're going to cut this and we're going to make it to fit what we need to and be good. But following the directions in a box, these directions, they're not hard. Just when people start talking, it's like if you don't know how to knit and people start talking or they speak a different language and you don't understand it, it's like glue C to D, press over E, fold over F, but don't put it on H, and then bring in Z, but wait, wait, wait. Those are the directions that drive me crazy when you go through and you need to go step by step, and they're like, but before you do the first step, do this. I'm like, oh no, because you know I don't read the directions ahead of time. If you hang out with me on Patreon, you know I just kind of make things up as I go along. It's a great challenge, yes, Gwenny. I love these little kits. The, the kids tell you, you know, you follow the kids and you're like, do I enjoy doing this? I do, so let me do it again. Or, no, this isn't good. I should not do it anymore. But getting the knowledge and then you can just do it on your own. Just like once you learn how to quilt, you can just make it up as you go along. Hi, Kathy. So I think that's really great. I think my allergies are really bad. I think I need to keep my drink maybe closer today. Nobody asked, probably nobody cares, but I still am using my Owala cups. I absolutely love this cup. It keeps everything cold. The ice actually gets frozen inside to the bottom of my water. I'm drinking some flavored water, mixed berry thing from Walmart, those little packets you put in like water bottles. I love that it has a handle so when the nerve damage issues I have in my hands, if I carry it by the handle, I won't just let go of it and drop it. So that's great because it has a little bit of weight to it. I like that it's metal with the coating on it. And I really love drinking through the top without a straw, but there is a straw and it's a huge straw. So this is my favorite. Oh, Gwenny, no, don't follow the pattern. Once you know how to do it, I say don't follow the pattern. We're gonna do the best we can here. I was struggling because it tells you, okay, you can go through the directions and kind of figure it out, but I was just going here. I wanted to cut all of my fabric ahead of time. So I have all my fabric cut and labeled, but it says box cover, outer fabric box, inside back cover, inside lid. And unless you know, I was going by the pictures and unless you know where all of the pieces are, it can be a little difficult to figure out what you're cutting. And I kind of wanted them to, you know, I wanted them to fabrics to go together a little bit. So let's open this up. I've, obviously I opened it if I have the directions out, but these kits, these kits are amazing. I don't know how much they cost, but I think they are a great way to start because ignore the fact that I say I can't follow the directions because that's a Robin thing. And you know what, this right here, I think this, if you kept, I'm gonna keep these because you guys told me to save these boxes and I did, but just looking at this because we've played, if I put enough paper in here, I can have paper or a photo album, a little scrapbook or something. Maybe it just opens up like that. I don't have to fill this whole section. I think that would be fun. And that's what these things do to you. They get you your creative juices going and you're like, oh, I can make something with this. But these kits, okay, it has the batting, but they have these imprinted letters on it. So it makes it really great. Thanks, Gwenny. When you, when you can sit here and think a little bit, and I like this community here because 
the last time you're like, okay, Robin, we'll do this, you know, save these, you can use this later or save these cereal boxes and the Triscuit boxes or whatever. And you can do this and that. It's great to have someone else to bounce ideas off of. So you can say, hey, this is what you can do with that and that. But I like these because they have everything stamped on it. I can tell already that this is where the pin cushion goes. So you can easily find the pieces you need. I'll just sort these a little bit so that I, we know where everything is. But with the kits, the only thing different is on the back, they say, you know, we suggest you buy this. So all of this glue and the little glue tray and everything and these corner pieces, they did not come with the kits. Which is fine because you, you can pick those up. You can pick those up. I think I've seen them at like Michael's or Joann's. You don't need to have like a fancy place to purchase them. Some of these match up, so I'll just match them up. And then we will see what we can do. I've been watching a few other videos here and there, because once you start looking for this stuff, everyone, everyone, well, YouTube, I consider YouTube, everybody wants to say, hey, you should watch this video. And I don't want to say I've watched all of the quilting videos, but I've watched enough quilting videos that I really don't want to watch another person make a quilt because I know okay this is the nine patch quilt and this one's got half square triangles I know how to make those and I don't find it enjoyable to listen to while I'm sewing so to find the different bookmaking ones I think I'm going to end up going down that bunny hole and just check all those out because it's something new I can't find anything to watch on tv I've watched the tv shows I've wanted to I really don't I'm starting to feel like an old lady because I really don't care for the new shows. Like, I love the Archie comics, but I don't like Riverdale TV show. I love the original Sabrina TV series, but I don't like the new one. We watched Charms four times through. I can't get into that new Charms. So there's like, either watch the old series 12 times or find something new on YouTube to watch. All right, so don't mind me a little bit. I am going to read the directions so it's not just me sitting here and you're wondering what's coming on. So I think we, okay, we're gonna build the box bottom to start with or something, the box is here. We need to apply glue to the edge of the short side of PC. I have an old cutting board and I have my copper baking sheets that I've never used for baking. I put those underneath my wool mat so that way we don't get glue everywhere. So we need to start with piece C and we're gonna glue that to a piece D. Masking tape. Oh, that's not a language I understand. And then we need a couple E's. So feel free to chat among yourselves or yell suggestions at me. If anyone watches one of those channels that have fun things to watch, like the different book things and all, I would love to hear about those. So, okay, I need glue. <laughs> glue would be helpful. So this is the kit. So even if you're not buying the actual kits and you don't, know where to buy any of the other stuff you can buy this it has the glue and the paint brushes and the roller and the masking tape but you know all that stuff can be bought super easily somewhere else i want to use the same one i used before i just rinsed these out really well like you guys said and made sure i rinsed my brush it's it was a little stiff and i just flicked it a few times and the bristles loosened up there's no glue on it you know, just dried stiff. This foam thing, we're using it. I use this the third time using it, and it's working great. But I just need to have the brush for right now. Let's see what this glue looks like. I've got glue on the edges, so of course the lid is glued on. I think it's been, what? I sent, oh, when we made them, I sent them out as Christmas gifts. So I haven't used this glue since before Christmas. Oh, 
Looks perfectly good to me. Keep the mess in the same areas. So you can see it runs out nicely. To do those two notebooks by using a little too much glue, I went through three quarters of this little bucket. Now this glue is called book binding glue. You could pick that up online anywhere, I'm sure. You know how Amazon is nowadays, you can get almost anything there. So I have C and I wanna put Brush the top of D onto the, oh, press the top of D. Apply glue to the edge of the short side of C. With a brush, press the top of D onto the glued edge so that it fits perfectly. So by looking at the picture, my D is going to go on top of this because of the way, like when you do a quilt block and you don't sew all of the seams and they have all of those half finished seams and you have to come back and finish them off. That's the only thing I can relate it to with quilting. We're going to put fabric on top of this. So I imagine tons of glue isn't a necessity, but glue is kind of like tape. Always use too much. I think if you had a little music playing, I use a little masking. This is really good masking tape. It didn't stick to our fabric or leave any residue last time at all, so it was really good. And it give you it's a full row, a full roll. They didn't like give you a, a sample or anything. And today I have baby wipe. Oh come on, I have baby wipes and. paper towels to stay clean because we learned that last time that one Robin's messy and two this is a messy project so that I can come through and just make sure this is the cutting mat that I use for my batting and stuff like that so if it gets glue on it I'm not going to cry so if I look and follow the pictures I have a C and a D, and now it tells me to put an E on. Here's my E. Now with these, you have to watch because this piece is actually longer than your original C because this time we're going to go past and we're going to have to glue it to these two edges here. I'm going to get myself some masking tape cut ahead of time because we're going to need it. Does this project have fabric covering? Yes, I have. I chose for many. I have this sewing fabric in yellow. And I cut extra of a couple things so I don't really know where they go. But this has a green stripe there, so I don't have a green stripe that I'm willing to use, but I have this green gingham, so I'm hoping to use that there. And then I have yellow for the dividers, white for the floor of the box, and green and pink for the pin cushion. So we're in good shape there. Does anyone have anything exciting going on this weekend if you celebrate Easter? My kids have all ditched me. Uh, no surprise, I didn't have anything planned. We didn't discuss anything for Easter anyways. I, I'm actually working. I have to work all weekend. Thank you. I thought if it's going to be a sewing box, that's the only sewing fabric that I have. So I thought that would work. I mean, you can make it anything you want, of course. Theirs has, you know, sometimes the sewing stuff, is, sewing room things are all like flowery when you buy those padded sewing boxes and stuff from like Walmart or whatever. Oops, I stuck my arm right in it. Can you see why I was never allowed to do much as a kid? 
And then picture that with very long hair down my back and that got into everything. I'd spin around and the ponytail would end up in there and the paint or something. Oh my goodness. I think our son will be down for Easter. Oh, but without his family. That, you know, that's part of him at least. Local quilt guild retreat. That'll be fun, Gwenny. You like to do those. Oh, East. I really loved Easter egg hunts. I think out of anything. Okay, that's that's the one thing that I miss for Easter. I mean, we used to always get together, but taking the kids out and letting them go crazy for the Easter egg hunts, that was always fun. We used to do all of the events. There's a Mike Greenwell's, a, a mini golf just not even a mile up the road from the house here. And we used to take all the kids up there. They used to go there for trick-or-treating and for the Easter egg hunts. Play hockey. And yeah, it's, it's just sometimes that's how it ends up being. Everyone just has to work. And it seems like Easter isn't always as big of a holiday as some of them can be and people just end up working so my daughter's going over to her manager's house he's it's him and his wife and they have three young children I think the oldest might be 11 and Miranda just loves the little kids so they asked her to come over to do something I don't know if they're decorating eggs or doing an egg hunt or whatever they're doing so she's going to go over and hang out with them and probably have Easter dinner. I cooked my ham yesterday, so I just wanted to have it already. Gwenny, were you not here when we made the notebook ones? You're going to glue the fabric right on and then just press it down. It just glues right on. It's really kind of neat. And I, I, I would have thought it would have been like wrinkly and stuff like that, but it's not. With the notebook covers, we got right into it, but this one we have to build the box first. So there's a little prep ahead. And I didn't want to do anything ahead of time because I, if you guys are like me, I knew you'd be like, wait, 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 I wanted to see that. All right, so let me see, that's gonna sit in so I have to paint this one. And with boxes of fabric like this, you could do the same thing, like I said, by using cereal boxes, cracker boxes. Even if you got like an Amazon box, you could take that apart and use that. And then you can add things, whatever you want, like beads and bedazzly stuff and whatever kind of trims and yarns or whatever. Hey, you made it. Happy Friday. Lucy's got my youngest son, mountain bike Saturday. He has a race. Yeah, it's getting to that time of season, isn't it, for everyone? They're all starting to get out and doing their things, and they have their, their weekend stuff. And It's going to be nice for everyone. You guys are going to start getting out and about and doing things. And we're all going to hunker down and hide inside. We've already had record highs. It's been 94 for a few days now. We usually don't see this kind of weather until June. It is really early this year. Hello, Dora. We are chatting about weekend plans, Easter egg hunts, and building a sewing box. I haven't decided yet what I'm going to do with this when it's done. Oh, if I'm keeping it, giving it as a gift, or putting it in the shop. I like to put things in the shop, but this, I don't know how well I could ship it. So there's my box. Lay rectangle A on a flat surface. Oh, we're still building boxes. Rectangle A on a flat surface, wrong side up. I don't know right from wrong, so we'll do it that way. There's two A's. All right. Ben 
been there, done that. Thought that was over once. Son got his license and drove younger sister around. Nope, now it's grandkids, yeah. Yeah, it's been crazy here with the weather. I mean, you guys, everyone's had crazy weather, so it's not just us. Here's A. B and A onto the fabric spacing. Lay rectangle A on a flat surface, wrong side up. Glue the lid A back B and base A in that order onto the fabric spacing pieces. So, okay. This is got to be outer fabric box, box cover. Does that look like it's 15 inches? Oh, wait, let's see. Bear with me. Box cover is A, so that's this. I made some of them a little bit larger just because of the sizes they said they weren't really they make it look look at this piece right here they make it come on they make it look like it's so super thick there that it's hard to see. It's like, that's what are you talking about? Aha, uh -huh, I'm on the wrong paper. No wonder why. Go over there and don't talk to me. Let's see. It's da -da 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 -da. So we have... You know what? I have all the extra fabric here. So if I glue the wrong piece in... Hi, Carrie. Go have lunch. If I glue the wrong pieces on, then I'll just cut extra fabric. Let me show you a little trick that I saw on a video when you're trying, because almost every book and stuff that you make has these, you have that spine and the spacing. They just took their little ruler right here and they put it in there and they considered that to be the spacing in between so that every time they did it, it was always exact. And I thought that was really smart. Because you're supposed to put it four millimeters apart. I don't know what four millimeters is, but in all of the other things, it was just like this. So then we cut out the corners. We're just going to go mostly by pictures here. Glue the lid back and base in that order onto the fabric, spacing 3 sixteenths apart, which is less than I can't see the markings on this one. I wonder if I need to have these just a little bit further apart. Okay, anyways, I have to move it to glue it, so we'll put this like this and this like this and we'll get the roller yeah I thought that was really neat that's why I like to watch just like when you guys watch me and you you already know how to do something but you kind of hang out just to hang out with me to watch the videos and then to wait for a tip and that's what I was doing with those I learned last time you do not need much glue so I put the extra on the first piece and then I can just go and pick it up because you don't want it to bleed through and this book binding glue apparently it's not Elmer's glue it really glues well so you don't need a ton and it does dry relatively quickly so it's not like just because you have a paint roller doesn't mean you have to put it on like paint and your finger will take some off yeah, I think the neat tips and everything are the best. They do. 
the quilting sh videos and stuff that I watch, and you never know. That's why sometimes I will watch one even though I know what they're doing, but if, if it's something like I was watching this week, I think I watched probably nine tote bag videos. I mean, I created my own tote bag design. I know what I'm doing, but you just never know when you might get that aha moment and someone shows you something and you're like, oh, dang. Oh. You're like, oh, that is so cool. That is a good tip to know. All right, so this has to have enough room there. And I'm gonna leave a little bit more because it said a quarter inch, just shy of a quarter inch. So I will go ahead. And the thing with this is, is if you put things in the wrong spot, then you don't have enough because your cardboard's a certain thing, so you have to be careful. Pictures seldom lie. Yes. Pictures, I like pictures. Sometimes the words you're just like, what part are you talking about? I don't understand. And then you're like, oh, picture, okay, I get it. Because they'll say in the other one, they were like, cut out this corner, but not that corner, and do this, but not that. And I'm like, okay, I'm not sure, so let's figure it out. Because with the notebooks, you had to do things a certain way. In certain places, you need to leave extra fabric, and others you don't. So this, we know we're going to cut out here. And you can always go back and trim back that excess fabric, but you can't add more on, right? So we cut out the corners and I'm gonna leave a little bit extra because that's going to allow me to cover up the corners of the cardboard. And remember when you first started quilting and stuff and you made mistakes and you start a new project that you've never done before, you're gonna make mistakes. I made mistakes on those notebook covers and I sent them out to two different people. One person knew that I made mistakes, but she didn't care and didn't notice them anyways. And the other person didn't know. She's not that type of crafter. So she didn't know I made mistakes and they looked perfect to her. I was able to wash off the excess glue. So that worked out really well. Now skipping the words, skipping the words. Let's see. along the top of B. So we're going to do this. Okay, well, they want us to start here. We'll switch over. We found out that the paintbrush is a really good tool. Well, that sounds fun, Carrie, actually. Oh, yeah, you have to do something. I mean, I get why some places won't let you, you know, like knit or crochet or something like that, but I don't know. I've heard some people work on like customer service, they answer the phone so nobody physically sees them, and they may or may not be allowed to knit, but again, especially if they're doing it from home, a work at home job, they go ahead and do it because no one can see them. And as long as you're taking care of the customer, because sometimes you can go hours without talking to anybody. So we're gonna have to bring over the center piece. And then with the blunt edge of our scissors, we're supposed to do this. I'm just gonna use, oh, I need a little dab of glue in there. A little dab will do it, learned that last time. Things come back. Even if you haven't done it in a while, you kind of remember like, oh yeah, that was helpful. And I have two of these rulers, plus it's washable, so I'm not worried if I get glue on it, I've gotten worse on it, you know, Sharpie marker and stuff. Oh yeah, Jackie, he's all set. You got him all set with his microwave? Thought that was kind of nice. Oh, I need to do it down here too, duh. It does get a skin on this glue, but still works fine. There's that. Oh, I 
to have enough glue to cover your fabric. We're going to put another piece of fabric on top because when we're done, we're not going to see any of this cardboard. And remember, I cut mine a little extra wide. Plus, I think they give you a little wiggle room anyway so that when you put the next piece down, that, that if you're talking and not remembering the little tip that you just remembered, you'll forget again so that we can cover everything up. See, now if you were making this at home, you would just make two pieces this size and one piece, whatever you might wanna make for the center, and then you cut your fabric out bigger. Uh, use your nails, repeat the procedure along the bottom strip, cut a triangle from each corner. Why cut a square from the corners? You didn't tell me cut a triangle. Glue fabric C over the area. Okay, that's more than we need. So we have to glue all of this underneath here, under here, we did that one already. And you just pull it with your fingers and it'll work its way up the edge. You can run your finger or something else along that edge if you want to have it nice. Hi Nomi, hello, hello, hello. Howdy, howdy. Now this spot, I probably use more glue, but again, it's going to get covered up. Definitely on the back of the book or the box or whatever, I wanna be careful. Some people have those little rollers. Those are very handy here. Okay, now this one, this is where I need to cut the corners and the triangle, because when I bring this up, I don't want to have the raw edges there. So on here, I'll leave a little extra. Let me test it on this side. So when I bring this up, it's going to tuck that in. Bring this piece up, it'll cover that corner. Yep, so I don't have any fray thread or anything showing. This time I will paint it onto the fabric. Tuck it in here. Now, I hope you realize I'm pretty much making it up as I go along and just trying to remember what I learned last time. in my corners so that those look good and then because really I mean aren't you supposed to just be having fun when you're doing these things if you can figure out the directions and the basics of it you just want it to look nice like nobody sees the seams on the inside of your quilt they don't know how you got there but they know that it looks good in the end Oh, fancy, with an air fryer too, wow. Air fryers really are an amazing technology. I've seen like the, the big air fryers that go this way with a toaster oven on them. I have two air fryers. I have a little one person one, and then I have one that's like an oven with the racks in it, and it does a rotisserie, and it does the air fryer, and all the fancy things, but now that it's just me, I don't really use that one as much. I tuck that in. Now remember, we're gonna put the metal corners on here too, so that's going to hide. I think the metal corners go on here. That'll hide any little stray threads. That was really good on the books and it protects the corners. So I don't know how this is gonna go. Who knows, maybe I might end up doing something weird with it. Now, glue fabric, apply glue strips, use your nails, cut the corners. Glue fabric C, B, B, because I wasn't sure. Here's fabric C. 
It's always good to label them to make your life a little bit easier. Thanks, Gwenny. 18 years old, wow. Especially during the summer, I, I really don't want to turn on the oven if I want to have just, let's say I'm making some homemade french fries and I'm putting four little potato wedges in. I don't want to do the whole oven. I have a toaster oven that can actually, it's big enough to cook like a, like a frozen pizza in it. So I use that a lot, but the air fryer is quick. I even cook when I have the, I have, I like the veggie burgers, the plant-based ones. You can put that in there for 18 minutes and you have a burger and there's no grease anywhere and it's really nice. Glue fabric C over the area between A and B. See diagram below. Remove the, okay. I think I will, do I just do it that? I don't have to fold the edges down. Well, we'll see. Let's do that. Here's my box. I want to put this somewhere where... Does anyone watch Pat Sloan? Did you guys see one of the recent episodes when they were showing the white on white fabric that you can use a, they had a little flashlight she linked to on Amazon. It's a black light flashlight that you can shine on your white on white fabric and it'll show you which side is the wrong side so that you don't have to keep guessing all the time. I thought that was great. It's actually on sale on Amazon right now. I did not purchase it. I don't necessarily need it. It's one of those things that are, oh, that's really cool. Counter footprint is a challenge. 16 years old, it's still old, hubby. Yeah, I don't have much room at all on my counter. My toaster oven pretty much takes up. And I have the Instant Pot over on the small one, like maybe where you would put coffee, a coffee station or something. I have one of those one cup coffee makers. I just pull it out, make coffee, and then put it back away when I'm done. All right, so we did that. Right or wrong, it's done. The only thing it doesn't say is to fold over the edges so that must get covered. Remove the inside of part F and lay part aside. Ta-da. Oh, by the way, how do you guys like this? Is that, is this a weird brightness? Then you would have to move it. What am I moving, Jackie? This one, if I got it wrong, I have it in the right spot. I just don't know if I had to fold over. Looks okay, good. Here, let me show you what it looks like without the light. Because I have these big studio lights now. I, it looks dark in here to me, but I don't know if it makes any difference to you guys. Oh, I don't drink a lot of coffee. Oh, okay, thank you. I don't drink a lot of coffee. All right, so remove this. Remove the inside of F and lay the glue part F onto center of fabric D. Fabric D, move you back over here. Fabric D, D is, this is a pretty green. I thought it went really well. I only have so much room in here and when I'm recording a video and I have the tripod right here and I have my sewing machine and I bring in the light and I take the other light and aim it down. I have two of these big lights, but I don't know if I have enough room for two of them at the same time. So this has to go on here. Glue part F onto center of fabric D, leaving three quarter inch seam allowance. So we're gonna put this here so that we can make an easy mess with it. When I sew pieces in wrong, backside and the front aspect. Yeah, so I made something recently and 
I sewed all the white pieces in. I sewed half the white pieces in the wrong way, but you really couldn't notice it. So I was like, there's no way I'm ripping that out. Because the white on whites, you can't really notice. And sometimes with something that's not a white on white, it's still, it just makes like the fabric a little lighter. It's not like crazy noticeable. My crumb curtain, it has fabrics that are wrong, backwards and stuff like that, and I'm like, whatever. So baby wipes are great in the craft room. I also use these to wipe down my cutting mat. When it gets like, if I just cut fusible fleece on it or something, it leaves all those little glue dots and oh. So that's good for that. Take this, and I have to leave <laughs> leaving three quarters of an inch seam allowance three quarters of an inch is two centimeters for those of you who do that ah, i didn't even do it even i never do anything even if it's not noticeable to the wrong side right who cares you know especially when i'm showing you guys stuff on my videos and i show you what's a mistake and i'm like hey here look really close to see my mistake you know, that's fine, whatever. And it's just like, I made a mistake. I think I talk about it in an upcoming video. I made a mistake, who cares, right? So when I come back here, now you don't see the mistake. And you put a quilt on a bed and after you quilt it and you wash it and stuff, it's it's what's going to bother you. And if it's not gonna bother you, and nobody's gonna notice it, it's fine. As long as the quilt's not gonna fall apart, I leave it. Cut, re okay. Cut corners as shown. So we're gonna cut these. If I miss some comment or question, my apologies. You can always ask again. And if you put my name or capitals or something, no guarantees I'll notice it, but I try. The moderators are usually good. Someone usually answers for you. And the moderators are usually a Robin. I signed up for Discord the other day to join a YouTube Patreon help community thing. I don't know about that, but that's kind of interesting that you can sit there and talk and chat and everything with everybody. Oh yeah, I, I can't help myself, Gwenny, when I get something. Not that I'm scrutinizing it and looking for a mistake. I'm always like, oh, I wonder how they did that. Oh, look, that fabric is on backwards. Ha <laughs> ha. I do the same thing all the time. Ain't that cool? Okay, I feel better now. And it's not like, oh, this person is really terrible. They did something wrong because I'm perfect. Well, we all know I proved that I'm not perfect. Glue to opposite sides of fabric on the cardboard. Cut remaining side slanted. Okay, so I think I'll glue these just to be a little different. Oops. By the way, glue washes out of your clothes, so when you wipe it on your shirt or your pants, you're okay. Yeah. I don't want someone to feel like they sent me something, they have to work so hard to make sure it's perfect and stuff like that. And I don't want anyone else to have to make things, you know, themselves for family and stuff and think, oh my goodness, I have to make it perfect. When we watch certain YouTube channels, when their companies, and I don't want to say any company name because I don't have like an example, but there are companies out there and they show things and they make sure that they make it three times so that it's perfect. They edit their videos so everything's perfect because they're a company and they need to show things perfect. We're just, you know, humans here having a good time making our stuff. We don't need to be perfect. We can just kind of make mistakes. And I think what the two most, I don't want to say just two most important, but they're on my, in my mind right now. Two of some of the most important things is one, being okay with that mistake and being able to keep going on. And two, knowing how to fix it if it bothers you. All right, so these I'm supposed to cut diagonally to make sure I do that. When I fold it, this is really, if you've upholstered furniture, then you know how to do this. We're just wrapping fabric around cardboard. It's not any different. Definitely not saving any of those scraps. I'll tell you 
that much right now. No, no, no. Tuck those in because that's what works for me. We all work differently. Our minds work differently. How we get from point A to point B. And you and I, and you and you and you and you and I could all make it at the same time together and we'll all do it our own way and at the end we'll all still look the same you know things are still going to be okay they're all going to go together nicely are you teaching me to reupholster my couch yes except i don't i can teach you how to reupholster a chair i've done that i actually have a chair in here that i painted and reupholstered some people take this and then they fold it like this to get that nice sharp edge. And that works out really good if your glue doesn't go past a certain spot. Reupholstering the seat of a chair is super, super simple. I actually did, I did mine here and then Justin and I sat down. If you guys have been here for a while, when we, it was Hurricane Irma, I think that was 2015. 2017 maybe and we had to reupholster a whole bunch of chairs for Tijuana Flats and we did that sometime during the hurricane before or after just during that time frame exactly plus you know what if you find an old quilt or your quilt has a bunch of holes in it you can go ahead and use that on your seat cover People, the whole quilt jacket thing right now has people up in an uproar and there's team A and team B and people fight over it. But if a quilt's gonna end up in the garbage, then I don't see a problem with covering my chair up with a piece of it that still works. That way the quilt is still part of my life. I've used it and I haven't thrown it away. Exactly, Gwenny. All right, so now we have to do something in the center. On the outside of part F, you lay, don't glue, four layers, and nope, nope, not that. Uh, cut remaining size slanted, now glue those sides. Cut the fabric in the opening as shown in the diagram, and glue fabric to inside F. So we don't want to go all the way to the corners. And I am going to be a quilter and cheat for a second. Slide over there and get a rotary cutter. Oh, I just made all kinds of people mad. I just, where'd my ruler go? Hmm, there it is. I lost my ruler. They tell you never to do this. And like when I'm putting zippers in my, in my pouch, in my tote bags, it's like never use a rotary cutter. And I might make a mistake now that I'm saying this out loud, but you know what? If you're careful and you only slice right there, Go slow. I, I don't see the problem. And then we can cut it to the corners. So we cut to there and not all the way because we need a little bit to cover. I can always cut more. This is actually just like doing a zipper and the welt where you cut the center and then you cut that tab into the corners. My line is not straight, it's not a problem, it's gonna be covered up. This is where the pin cushion is going to go. Yeah. Oh no, oh no, Gwen. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna go back to the old thing and sewing with Nancy. You remember she used to take sweatshirts and cut them up the center and turn them into a jacket? And I see people now making an entire quilt, batting and lining, cutting the pieces out from a jacket pattern and doing all that. And I'm like, no, I'm going to go back to the sweatshirt jacket and I'm going to buy a sweatshirt that fits me just the way I want. I'm going to cut it down the center. I'm going to sew my quilt pieces to it and I'm going to call it a day. That way I don't have to put a lining in. It's nice and warm. I need to cut a little closer to the corner. I made hoodies. If you've been here for a while, you know I made hoodies for my kids. And I did mostly good, except for Robbie has really large hands and he couldn't put his hands into his front pocket. <laughs> so, yeah. All right. Zoom, 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 zoom. I left a little bit. Come on. There we go. I left a little bit, but when you go like this and you go like 
Oh, come on. This, when we flip it over, it's going to cover it all up. So I'm close. I'm probably like two threads away. I'll definitely have to trim the side fabrics. Those are too long. Six inch scrap blocks, planning to make a dressing gown and a jacket, but I'd want to order a jacket. Yeah, I mean, having a jacket pattern. Now, okay, the sweatshirt's great, but actually thinking about it, I would probably want it to be longer. So maybe that's a reason to have the jacket pattern as I'm sitting here saying, I'm just gonna do it this way. And I guess it depends too on what size sweatshirt you buy and then how far you want it to hang down. I don't like the ones that cut right like at the hips and stuff like that. I have I have hips, I have a belly and I have a butt, so I, I like to cover it all up. I don't want something where I raise my hands and I'm gonna get a draft and get cold. That's never been something that I've enjoyed. Okay, we're good. I'm gonna put this here so that I can make a mess. I think if you start with a simple enough pattern that you can definitely do this with kids. I mean, some kids might need help with the glue and for a kid's notebook, I've seen people in years ago making notebooks with kids and you, they go to like the kindergarten classes and the school classes. So you use um, like a glue stick instead of the glue and it's gonna work for the kids. I would, I could never, I could never pick up someone's anything, but something that's a handmade thing like that. And if you're at like a quilt show or quilt guild conventions and stuff like that, they know, they know someone took a lot of time and worked on that. And that's, that's just, that's just wrong. But I also believe in karma and the universe and that it's going to come around and bite them in the butt. So there, that's done. On the inside of F, you lay, you don't glue, four layers of batting. Well, they only gave me, oh, they gave me two, so I guess I need a couple more. I don't know. Batting. Six by fourteen. Six. Hmm. So they say four layers, so I'll go get some more batting. Oh no, what will I ever do? Where will I ever find batting? I have my smaller batting scraps here. The ones turn into fabric postcards. So that one will work. What else do I have in here? Oh, here's one. That, that's a lot. Well, I'll give you a nice fluffy pin cushion. I can always look at it and say, hmm, maybe not that much batting. There we go. Cut it into four, but it's it has to fit on here. So if I cut what they gave me, they only gave me two pieces. So I wonder, I just cut it in half. And that's the two pieces that they gave me right there. And theirs feels like cotton batting too. It just feels a little brown, looks a little brown. Somebody had to be hungry. Uh oh, I missed something good. A bag of bagels. Oh my. That's crazy. That's crazy. I don't like, I like bagels, but I don't like them that much. All right, directions. 
All right, place part with, okay, four layers of batting, cut these pieces accurate to the size of the part, place part with, oh, to the size of the part, not extra. Mm -hmm. Place part with batting, facing fabric on back side of fabric E, cut out the corners, fabric E. Because I might have to wrap this around so I don't need to have any extra batting. So, stop being a rush. Old rotary cutter, not super sharp. Old mat. I don't have to worry about picking batting scraps out of it. Just make sure I don't cut through that cardboard. You could trace around it. I could just cut it up against the cardboard, but this gives me that extra. going to be really cute when it's done. Homeless people aren't allowed in Cape Coral. There, there, there's rules against it. Anytime they find people, they tend to take them over to the next city, which is crazy. So do we have homeless people here? Yes, of course. I talk to them. I help them out. I bought food for one. One, I ran across one young guy, reminded me, looked almost identical to my son, Robbie. So I, I drove past him and I had to go back. And help him out a little bit. They don't allow people, it's against the law to stand out on the side of the road and to ask for money and stuff. You know how sometimes people will be right there that's now against the law here in this area because too many people have been getting hit you know and killed so it's dangerous the even the firefighters they are not allowed for mda they're not allowed to stand in the intersections and collect money anymore because we're just too busy our streets are just too busy and everyone drives fast it's just not safe for anybody okay so we have four Yeah, it's crazy. Place part with batting facing fabric on back side of this fabric. Cut out the corners as in part F. Glue two opposite sides of fabric. Okay, so we are going to when you're making a notebook, you can put some batting down on the for the cover and stuff, and do this too. Put down a layer to a batting, fusible fleece, felt, flannel, to give it a little cushion. Corners are not neat. I don't want to move it because I'm afraid I won't get it right and it'll be lopsided in a weird spot. So it says to glue two options. This is, again, we're just doing like, I need more glue, as if we were upholstering a chair. You do two sides and then do the other two sides. Bye, Carrie. Have a great weekend. If you do Easter, happy Easter. Otherwise, happy weekend. Leave some of the glue on the lid. Put that there. Because of the batting, I'm going to go a little bit heavier with the glue here. And I 
put it too far onto the cardboard there, but that's going to be okay. I want this to really hold it well. I'm holding the batting down when I do this. Make sure my sides are smooth. Again, it's, a, it's pretty much rinse and repeat once you do it one way. Just by having the batting doesn't mean anything. We're still going to do our edges here, the corners, diagonally so that we can cover up those corners. This is going to go inside here, so I would imagine most of it's going to be covered anyway. But I want glue on my scissors. put a little bit of glue onto the edge of the batting too just to let it hold it all in place look at me being nice and neat let's see how long that'll last right these silicone mats are great because you can just you can let it dry peel the glue off or just wipe it down with the baby wipe and let it dry that way. Hi Giovanna, how are you doing? I'm just trying to tuck that little bit of a corner in so that the raw edges don't show. Glue washes out of clothing. This glue does, so I'm not gonna do that, lean it against my shirt. These aren't perfectly neat, but it's gonna go in like this, so I should be okay. Look, worst case scenario, I keep it for myself if I see anything that's not worthy of giving to someone or putting it in the shop. And if it looks great, then I will give it as a gift. Okay. Look, we get to turn to page. Page three. So you go there. Now we're on page three. Oh, that's the piece I was looking at. That's all the batting. That's why it was so thick. There we go. If you like, you can put the metal book corners on the corner of your cover. I want to do those now, I guess. Okay, we learned not to hammer them. Where's my list? What kind of book corner should I use? The midi. Those look, no, they're the same size. So thank you so much to the person who sent me these kits, but to also send me all of the extras, because this is much more then I need so I can make a variety of things still as long as I put this in a place where I can find it again. Let me get a drink. I don't mind watching replays, but it's nice when you can watch live too. Because as we're talking, I don't always remember to read what the comments are, so you can't always see them when you're watching it live because it takes a while for them to show up. Does anyone else enjoy peeling glue like off of their hands and stuff like that? I always like that. All right. Put these back away. Now they say, I should do this now. And it told me I needed four? Yes. So I'll set you two aside. Put these on now. Yeah, the lives are fun. Sometimes, like, some people go live that I watch, and they'll go live at, you know, eight o'clock at night. I'm not coherent enough at eight o'clock at night to watch and figure out what's going on. And I like to, I like to do stuff while people are live so that I can watch. Now remember these have two sides. There's the straight side and then there's a little empty spot there. Let me show you. 
okay someone shows up later see this is this one is the right side and that one where the bend is that's the wrong side unless of course you like that look and then you, know, you put it on any way you want now you're supposed to hammer these but last time I scrimped them with my pliers and they didn't leave marks The hammer was one, too loud, and two didn't work as well. I actually, I'm really surprised. I'm, I'm the Amazon queen. I'm always buying my supplies on Amazon because they're cheaper. I can get more and they deliver right to my house. I placed an order this morning at like no, yeah, this morning at like 7.30 or something like that. And it's going to be delivered, well, sometime after 5 p.m. tonight. I was totally shocked. But I gave in and I bought more of the, the key fobs, that metal piece. And I had that big tool before, so I bought the little tool. I tried doing them where you just sew them and add the piece, you know, add on the lobster claw clasp and stuff. And I just don't like the way my fabric looks. So I broke down and bought the hardware because I want to be able to offer key fobs and offer them with the tote bags and stuff like that. So I was able to buy, and you have to be careful when you're buying things on Amazon because sometimes you'll say you're getting 100, but you're getting 50 of piece A and 50 of piece B. But this one, it was a set of 60 or 65, or a set of 100 of them, plus the tool, it was only like $14. It was really good. I, Giovanna, I did that last time with the fabric in between, but it doesn't show anything on this because this metal is already kind of has that look, so you don't see anything. Now, these ones wouldn't be the best because they do have the grooves, but it doesn't show. So it, it, it worked out fine, which is why I went ahead and did it this time because last time I think I used fabric or batting, but it didn't really seem to make a difference. Put the inside of part F back into the opening. Glue the complete part to F. Come on. Glue the complete part F to the inside of your cover, making sure that your F part fits exactly between the metal ends. So that's gonna go not <laughs> get back there all right that's just gonna have to be although the corners aren't all going down perfectly because of all the excess fabric so maybe I'm just being picky I tried to buy a quilting book from Amazon oh Amazon's a little hard when it comes to that plus the uh, the uh, quilting books and stuff some of them can be very expensive on Amazon there are I know you're in another country so it might be different for you but we have a lot of used books online that is a little bit better to purchase from press well onto the part because there will be some pressure on it using masking tape to support where needed all right so i think i will glue this I like to do some live streams when we're playing with beads and stuff like that too and you know we're just having a little bit of fun. I like these, let's sit down and work on a project together. Good thing about having two is I can do this. then 
then put that over here. No, hold on, you stay you just stay there. Put some glue on you. Put it on my chair. Hopefully I didn't glue it to my chair. I love my new chair. Very happy with it. Again, an Amazon purchase because I couldn't find a chair in that, come on, in that price range. Just manhandle it and force it to where I want. And then masking tape it. I, I bought all the supplies to like make stitch markers for knitting, which you can also use for your, you know, your books and stuff like this to have them dangle down. I just never got to that. I lost some of my supplies within my house here and then I just never got back to it. I love bead embroidery. Oh my goodness. I love bead embroidery. And I like the kind, not where you glue the beads down. I like where you sew them down and you actually make like jewelry and designs and stuff with it. So I've been collecting beads and things just because again, I just really like it. And you guys said you don't mind doing different things during the live streams that we don't have to just do quilting plus we're still playing with fabric we need to do some more upcycling recycling type stuff because last time when we made the books everyone said they wouldn't mind you know making some books after this is the last kit and then we can actually just start making some things I don't have a lot of craft things here in town I have Michaels and Joann's and Walmart's and there's a Hobby Lobby now but excuse me, it's not supply wise for running a business and stuff. When you're going to make a hundred zipper pouches or more a year, buying zippers at Joann's is not cost effective. Nice. Nice. Stop. Just the the pin tuck somebody do the embroidery on the fronts of the shirts when they're all you know scrunched together and all the different beadwork like the beads on a sewing on a, a wedding dress and stuff like that i love being able to create pictures to combine the fabric the embroidery floss and the beads and add some sequins and the tassels i was going to do tassels as a live stream but then i wasn't sure if we could like okay here's a tassel should we just make some more because that took five minutes and we're done if you guys would want to make tassels carefully re oh we're done carefully remove the masking tape from the inner box okay carefully remove oh yeah good thing it's gonna get covered because it's got it's pulling off the cardboard I could weigh it down with a big book. Uh, yes, yes, I could. I, I've got it down pretty good with the masking tape. I think we're okay there. This glue, the book binding glue, it's not like using tacky glue or something like that. It sticks really fast and the masking tape seems to do a really good job. I have done the book stuff before. I'm not sure how I get that down because of the pin cushion sticking up so much in there. It does. I was hoping that green and the pink would look nice together and I like it. I'm mixing things. I've got novelty fabric and flowers and and then I have the gingham and I'm like, I hope it all looks good together, but it's nice and bright and colorful. Hi, Rochelle. Well, welcome, welcome. We're glad you can catch us. We are making a small sewing box right now. Uh, normally during the lives, we do random things. We Play with scraps and stuff lately we've been making stuff like this testing the waters to see what everyone might like to do nice you guys do some amazing things all right 
Sorry about that noise. All right, the box is done. Carefully remove the max, takes fabric B. Yeah, see, this is where I wasn't sure what fabric B was, but so this one was the outer fabric. This is fabric B, and I thought this would be cute. It's not quite the same color as the green in there, but I think it's close enough. And I think it's just gonna be, oh, isn't that so cute? Take, I think this might be German, let me see. Take fabric B, leaving a half inch strip of fabric extending past the base of the box and the rest above the upper edge of the cardboard. Glue the fabric around all four sides, outside the box, glue an overlap of approximately three eighths where the fabric meets the starting point. Okay, fold it down so you can't see the seam and there's no raw edges. Leave to dry briefly before trimming the excess away as neatly as possible using the edge of the box as a guide. So they want us to wrap this around like this. So this actually works out pretty good. I was worried about getting all of the gingham plaid looking stuff lined up nice and neat, but now I can do that and it lines it up perfectly. So we have to glue all of that and I need to fold over a smidge here. So there are no raw edges showing. I wish I'd have read ahead. I would have hit that with an iron, but this will be fine. And I want to have it tight, that much I know. Oh yeah. And look, I can even line it up. Cause really the only thing you're gonna notice is right where the seam is, as long as it's not crooked, crooked. Okay, so let's start with, I know it's all the same, but I have to do that. I have to. Little sisters, welcome Michelle. We've just had supper. Oh, macaroni and cheese and peas. I've been figuring out, because I'm allergic to milk, so I've been working on figuring out how to make macaroni and cheese, and I found that if I use the nutritional yeast recipe to make like liquid cheese for nachos, and then I add in some shredded cheese, oh, Robin Suzanne. By the way, my middle name is Suzanne, and I call myself Robin Suzanne when I do silly things. I don't wanna say dumb or stupid things, because that's not nice anymore but I do silly things, but I've been doing that and I've been actually liking the results. It makes it nice and creamy and that way I can make the smallest amount. I almost pushed down on here. It's not a wooden box. I can make just enough for me to have for one or two meals because I don't remember having macaroni and cheese as a young child. I know when I moved from my grandparents into my parents, my father and stepmother's house when I was 13, there was four kids and two adults. So we definitely had macaroni and cheese. But I know Rob, Rob grew up with macaroni and cheese with hamburger in it, ground beef all cooked up. So we started doing that and we had it with hot dogs and it's just, it's just comfort food. Not something I want to eat all the time, but, and of course you can, you can also, you know, adult it a little bit and add some, not lactose intolerant. I'm a hundred percent allergic to milk. I can't have cross contamination. I have to be really careful. Like right now my house is milk free, no problem. But when I move in with the kids, when I, when everyone was living here, I found out when I was 35 that I'm allergic to milk, I would take a cutting board or a plate out and I would set it down and I would do whatever I needed to because sometimes Rob or the kids would put like slices of cheese right on the stove because it was clean or it would fall onto the counter or something. And not everyone was good about cleaning things up. So I would just use something to cover the space so I didn't get anything on. But now, of course, I don't have to worry because right now I'm on my own. I bought 
normal butter to make Robbie's birthday cookies and it was a mistake because it's so much cheaper. The dairy-free vegan butter is very expensive. So I thought I would make it with his, but then I realized I had to bleach the entire kitchen. I had to clean everything, make sure like the refrigerator handle was clean. I had to make sure the faucets were clean. I'm like crazy. It would have been worth it just to spend the extra money and not have to double clean the kitchen because it messes with my stomach really bad. Thank you, Lucy. I'm also allergic to soy, which is why I don't eat out because everything has either milk or soy in it. Soybean oil is cheap, so just about every product you buy at the store has it. I make my own bread and stuff like that. Okay, so now this part, it actually worked out good because it saves me money from eating out or you know when you're out and about and you know stopping at Burger King or whatever is not good for you or Wendy's or wherever you might be stopping but you do it anyways because you're out and about and you're hungry and you just want to grab something well I either just stay hungry or I keep things in the car I pack snacks and stuff like that and it also makes sure that I eat a little bit healthier too because can't eat all that junk. All right, this one, let's see. Line everybody up and we'll fold you under, okay? Paint brush. This, we did this last time in the winter and it's definitely hotter. This is drying out quicker. Fold it right on. There we go. Margarine still has milk in it for the most part. I buy Country Clock. Country Crock has a plant-based one. They have um, they have an olive oil and and almond oil or whatever I don't the almond one is it was nasty I didn't like that I buy the olive oil one the only thing is is it tastes really great but if you get the butter on your hands it's like putting glue on your hands it stays there you can't just like wipe your hands off on a paper towel you have to take the soap and really scrub because it's an oil-based butter there's no dairy in it so it has to have something you have to really scrub it to get it off and I thought gee that can't be really good for your body it's only vegetable based well that's good we have butter is dairy products milk from the cow I can't have milk from any animal all right it says we should let it dry leave to dry briefly before trimming the excess fabric neatly as possible using the edge of the box as a guide so we cut down the edges and then cut a vertical line through the fabric right down. Where am I cutting the excess from? Well, I don't see anything, so I'm going to hold on. Carefully cut a vertical line through the fabric right down to each of the eight corners of the box. Now make four eighth inch horizontal cuts into the longer strips of fabric exactly an eighth of an inch above the corners. See all of those words, they just blur together. I can't seem to get them to stick in my brain. This will allow the fabric to be stuck down easily at the corners. The fabric extends beyond the bottom of the box. Fold the fabric on the box and mark the position inside corners. Cut a triangle fabric weight corner and I'll stick the strips. Show me a picture. Okay, so here's the bottom. We're just gonna ignore that for a minute. Now on the inside, I have to be relatively neat because 
this is the inside of the box. The bottom won't matter because it's going on there. So I'm gonna do the bottom of the box first because I can do whatever I want here. And I think I'm just going to do where you put these over and then you fold these over. This is thin fabric. It should, I could cut out All right, they showed us doing this, so let me do this. Does anyone have a suggestion? Are you allergic to, I'm allergic to soybeans, if that's what you meant, yes. My daughter's oldest was born, she was allergic to protein, her formula was pre-digested protein, everything was kept separate, no cry, yeah. Now with soy, I'm fine. I know soy makes my mouth swell up and my throat close up, but I get a tingle on my lips and my tongue before, so if it's something that says, like soy lecithin, since I had my allergy shots, I could do soy lecithin. That's not a problem. If it's far enough down on the ingredients list, if it's like in the top five ingredients, I don't bother. But a lot of things also have like soy flour and soy protein, and I just don't mess with those things. But if it's something that says may contain soil, and it's usually a cross-contamination thing, I'm okay with that on the soy. But if it says... If it says like for the milk and stuff, I'm just trying to figure out how I want to do this. For the milk, make like can, if it's been processed on the same equipment, I'm usually okay. Like I tried going to Chick Fil A because they have the waffle fries are not cooked in a soybean oil or anything like that, so I can actually eat those. But they're chicken nuggets, which are dairy free. They're grilled nuggets. I can't eat those because they put them right on the grill without cleaning the grill. And there's a cross contamination. And I, after eating them, I get nauseous. It doesn't make me sick, which is great. It doesn't do anything down in the bowels and all, but it just makes me nauseous and uncomfortable. And I would think that the more I ate, the more of a problem there would be. So I just don't eat them. And I don't go to Starbucks because even though they have all of the vegan options, they don't clean their mixer and they don't have one just for vegan stuff. They cross contaminate all their equipment. So I don't get coffees at Starbucks because they don't know how to behave. And I don't, you know, I don't complain. And it's not like saying, oh, Starbucks should make things for me because I'm so special. No, I get it. I just know that I can't eat there. And again, I don't have to spend $5 or $8 or whatever it is on a coffee. So I'm good to go. I make my own at home. I hear a lot of people, here's a good question for you. I use a Teflon sheet to protect my iron from the fusible. Now there is adhesive on my sheet. How do you clean it off? Well, I would start with this first. I would go like this. I would rub it with my fingers because when I get heat and bond on a Teflon sheet, I can usually just rub it off. Or you can take like an eraser, just pick one up at the Dollar Tree or something and erase it like this. Or take an old washcloth or a, if you have like wet wipes or something, try wiping that off and see what happens there. That would be my first thought. Otherwise, maybe put it down on an old towel or put like old like paper towels on top of it. Heat it up with the iron and then with some type of protective thing on your hand, then see if you can get it off when it's hot. That would be my suggestion. Yeah, magic eraser. There you go. Leslie's got it. Magic eraser. All right, is this going to cover most? Okay, leave around the seat. So let me do this. Onions and egg. I love onions. And of course, as I get older, I have an issue with acid reflux. I also have a latex allergy, which makes some things interesting because there's a crossover from latex. Like I can't eat tropical things. I can't eat raw carrots. I can't eat cherries and raw apples they make my throat close up and that i was told from my allergist that's a carryover when you have a latex allergy most people many people can't actually eat tropical foods 
tropical fruits. Really, Gwenny. Gwenny always knows, because Gwenny tries all these things. She's always full of a good knowledge. I never would have thought to flex it and have it just pop off. I have, I have a magic eraser. This is my, this is how I clean my iron. I have a magic eraser. I have a spray bottle of water. And I have an old washcloth. I spray the washcloth with the water and I iron on it. And if that doesn't work, I hit it with the magic eraser. One of you guys sent me fancy iron cleaner. I haven't tried it yet though. Cause for what, I don't know why, but black stuff comes out of my iron. I've never had black. It's, it's almost like, it feels almost like rubbery stuff. It's just strange. All right, so this is the bottom. It's going to get glued onto the box anyway. So I'm not going to worry too much. Just these pieces of fabric that are on fabrics on fabric. Gwenny makes all the errors first. When he's been doing it for a while and you do, you sew a lot often and you come across people that have also given tips and tricks and it works out really well. And then we can learn from them through you. All right, that's gonna stick to my cutting mat mold. Did I say mold? Maybe someone else did. Any kind of words can come out of my mouth. All right, now, on the inside, carefully cut the vertical line through the fabric right down to the eight corners of the box. Now make four horizontal cuts onto the longer strips of fabric. So I think we just need to get this to fold down nice and neat. I don't think we need to do all of their fancy things because this is just thin fabric that'll fold. And yeah, look at that. You just have to worry about that part. Ooh, I wonder maybe I didn't. Ooh, I hope it goes down far enough. Ooh, that's my only concern. Oh, well, this may be, this may be what defines whether or not it's mine or someone else's. The black from your, oh, the black from my iron? You think that's mold? Really? I use it so much, do you think? Because it's like, I don't know, it's, it's every few days or something that I just have to go through and clean it because it just has that, it doesn't stick to my fabric because when I first did it, of course, it was on white fabric and totally freaked me out but it just rubs off almost like like when you get rubber cement on something and you rub it off and oh my goodness I've glued myself to the strings it kind of reminded me of that so now I just make sure I check my iron and I can feel because it makes my iron drag a bit of vinegar in the iron I can do that I thought once I got off the well water and I got the city water that, you know, things would be better. But I got to say, my well water a thousand times tastes better than the city water. I still have my well system. The water no longer tastes good because it doesn't go through an aerator and it sits. I only use it to water plants now. I'm actually a rebel. You're not supposed to be able to keep your well, but since I don't have a sprinkler system, I was able to keep my well system. Could be if the iron doesn't dry out between fills. Hmm. A few drops. It's all worth giving a try, right? Because the I know vinegar 
I think I've heard that before. I don't think that's going to actually hurt the iron. All right, let's do this. Tuck you into there. Let's just do this. I know I've seen people do it this way. I don't feel like I'm being a super rebel. the seams there. Yeah. Could be calcium buildup and then it burns so vinegar melts the calcium. Interesting. I don't want to use distilled water. I looked into that before. Like there's like, you know, just have the spray bottle versus the iron. But I really like that hot steam. I really, really like that hot steam. So. All right. Don't look, but my corners are not perfect. Before I glued it, they look great. Now they look just okay. But once we start putting all the inside pieces in, we'll be fine. Turn the page. Right? Numbers going higher. 9, 10, 11. Do that, do that, do that. Apply fabric to piece G. Piece G. Okay, apply fabric to piece G following the procedure described in point seven. For piece F glues the inner base into the bottom, but doesn't tell me to piece G. No. I think this is what I will need. Let's see. Yeah, there we go. And then we'll do the whole thing like that. And then this should sit right in there. I went with white because I thought it'd be a nice contrast against all the bright colors and stuff just to settle it down a little. So I'll put glue all over this piece. And when you think you don't have enough, you're fine. You have plenty. I think for this one, just squeezing it in is also going to help hold it into the box. So let's go this way, smooth everything. I think you could, bye Leslie, have a great weekend. Google the black stuff you see. Oh, we're merged. See, that's how I was thinking about dust and stuff like that. And I've been getting it even before I was using the spray adhesive, so I knew it just wasn't from that. And then, so we're going to do, cut out the four corners. I'm really bad about centering things. Life. Good thing nobody sees this part, so I don't have to be perfect. Again, if you're making this on your own without thinking, you know, without having measurements, you're just gonna lay your piece of cardboard down on a piece of fabric, cut the fabric around it, and it's not going to be a piece this and piece that and match this fabric to that piece. You'd be like, hmm, what looks good here? Well, I think I'll use that. And then, so these are gonna go in, so then we do that anyway. Put you there. Oh, it's going to take some warm water to get this stuff off. All 
I'm, I'm close, I'm close to saving up and buying the, what is it, the, Ol the Olisio, Oliso. I think I always add an extra iron. I think it's the Oliso iron. I keep watching the videos because they keep coming out with new ones and doing giveaways. And I'm like, oh, stop showing the videos because it's like, now that you guys told me that I can put it right on my wool mat, my, my cordless one, not cordless, but you know, the, the iron is cordless, not the base. Now that you guys said I can do that, I've been doing that a little more often and it helps. So I don't always want to, you know, trying to set it down when this one has two pointed ends so it can't stand up on its own. So that's helped. It's that thing though, when you see everyone else getting something and you're like, oh, I need that, I need that. And you don't need it, you want it, and that's usually a different thing. So I try to wait a while to see, you know, how much of a want it is. I mean, if I need something like, I'll look, I'm like, okay, I want to make key fobs. I need those, that hardware. I'll do it. And $20 is a whole lot different than 200 and then some. So I just try to be careful. I'm going to be having a sale coming up soon for those of you that might be interested in some zipper pouches. I don't have an exact date yet, but I'm going to be putting those on sale to just help move some of the product out. So when I make more this summer, there'll be room for everyone. So put this one in, that one in, and bring that up. There we go. And yes, I do talk out loud when I'm alone. The cats used to freak out, but they've gotten much better. They're used to me now. Like, oh, nope, mom's not talking to anyone. She's good. They should be coming in. It's 20 minutes to 5. They hear me talking to you guys, so they're okay. But they should be coming in soon to pester me. At least s'mores. This time change, this time, really, they don't, they let me work a lot longer until like 4, 30, 5 o'clock. Yeah, it's like, I, I know the YouTube channels, they're there to sell product. So like if, like Pat Sloan works with the Fat Quarter Company, so she shows what they're working on and selling and stuff. And it's the whole point of it to be an influencer and influence me to buy it. But I like to know about the new stuff, but stop influencing me. I don't need it. I just want it. Glue the inner base into the bottom of your box. Press down well into the corners. I'm going to do a very bad thing. No, I don't need to do that. I can glue the back of this. I've glued my mats, my golden things here together. No problem. I've got a lot of gluing coming up still. Come on. This is about the end of it for the glue. I'll have to watch on Amazon and see what the prices are for the book binding glue just so I can have some on hand, like a little container of it. My cat loves to hear me talking. My cats, they kind of like hmm, freak out a little bit. They don't know. Like before, anytime I would have a couple of the cats in here and they'd hear me talking, they would run immediately. It's like if I'm recording a video or something, I don't know what they thought was happening, but it totally freaked out. And I don't know how they know the difference they know like, hey guys, it's Robin, you know, hey everybody, it's Robin, Aris on a crafts. They hear that and they run, but when they hear me attempting to sing to myself or talk to myself, they don't run. I am rubbing the glue off my hands onto the carpet. I'm such a bad crafter. Okay, glue this in. My green definitely needed to be more. Oh man, I'll show you what this looks like. You'll see what I mean. I didn't think about this. You see the cardboard down there? I could easily glue a ribbon around there to cover that up or create a green piece of fabric like that. It didn't cover it. So make sure your sides are going to go in far enough. I was splitting it and I didn't think about that part of it. Glue parts H, I, J, and K each onto fabric G. 
So I thought this green, this yellow would be cute in there for the dividers. With three quarters of an inch fabric surrounding. Now glue the other side of the cardboard pieces and roll them over. Ah, okay, let's see if we can follow the directions on that. So wrong side of the fabric. I need H, I, K, where's J? Try J and K. It doesn't show. I and J. H and K. Cover. No, nope, go down more. So we need to flip it over so it covers it because both sides are going to be seen. So I'm going to give extra in between. Well, rubbing the glue off my hands, I you know what? This is my room. And I don't have to worry about anyone else and I close the door and I'm the one responsible for vacuuming it so I feel like you know I don't throw I'm not Eleanor Burns I don't throw you know my fabric on the floor now my cats would love that I, J, and K. Glue parts, fabric surrounding. Now glue the other side of the cardboard piece. You know, so this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to do this. I'm definitely careful with pins and needles and such. Rotary cutters. Scissors. I've always been into like a room with tiled floor and stuff. So working with the carpet, I never realized how much actually makes it to the floor and how much thread and stuff collects on the floor on the carpet. And it just, cause it stays here. It doesn't just like, cause the air blows. And since we used to have carpet in the rooms and now we have tile, there's that space underneath the doors that we never really did anything about. So the wind, the air, the AC blows that around everywhere. So that, that blows like all the pet fur and stuff around. But now with the carpet, I can just see all of my threads. I'm like, oh, yep, I worked with red today. Look at all the red threads. Stop sticking to my fingers. Okay. No, nope. I think my thought process is not going to work. So let's do this. I thought everything's going to move when I go to flip it over. But it was nice. It was a nice thought. We're almost at the ends, guys. We're almost there. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. For those of you listening to us on the replay, don't have much exciting going on. We're just babbling. I know many of you like the background noise like I do, just listening to people babble. I put people on that are like, come hang out with me while I pack Etsy orders. 
come hang out with me while I clean my craft room. I'm like, wait, someone's gonna clean their craft room? I gotta see that. They say flip it over, but yeah. This part's like a jigsaw puzzle. All right, so place part H exactly in the middle. Okay, I get to cut it. I and J, oh, we're doing I and J identically. They don't have to be in the same piece, I don't think. Cut you off, cut you off, cut you off. Let's see where I and J go. Where's the picture? Glue part H exactly in the middle on the right side of the box. Part I against it. Parts K must be glued to the front side of the box. And part J fits exactly between I and the left side of the box up against the ends of the KC diagram. All right, so we need more gluing. Do we need, it doesn't say anything about gluing, does it? The excess fabric I don't have to have kind of want this to have a little bit of fabric don't I I feel like that corner piece is here it needs to fold down and not have all this stuff just shreds with the thread raise like crazy. This is one of those, I'm going to make it up as I go along and let's see, this might go into one of my videos as a tips and trick thing. That's kind of like what I do when I'm making things. It is fun to just sew and not have to think about YouTube, but at the same time, I also enjoy showing you guys stuff. Especially when I see people come back like on older videos and they're like, I can now sew in a zipper, thank you. And I'm like, oh, that feels so good to know that someone was able to figure something out because of my rambling and something I said. Now, I talk a lot and I ramble naturally, but I also like to just, it's not just a tutorial. It's also here's some, oh, that's going to have to get cleaned. It's also here's some tips and tricks that might help you along the way. In your process of making said item. This is probably gonna get me in trouble, but we'll see. We're so close. You ever get close to the end of a project and you're like, I can see the finish line, or you're like, okay, I'm almost done, so I'll just stop here and I'll finish it another day and then you never come back to it. I was rambling with my patrons and how it's been so nice, or I said it to you guys in, this last Whip It Wednesday or a future one because I did a quick little video about my friend's tote bag because I mailed it out and she got it before her birthday. I'm so happy. I thought the post office says it was going to show up the day after her birthday. So it's nice that it showed up in two days early. But I was babbling in that video on how it's nice train of thought's gone. Oh, how working with the patrons and stuff are allowing me to finish projects because so many times I would just finish and say, I would do the top and like, I'm done. Or I'd run across like that one pattern on the coffee mugs and I'd be like, nope, not gonna finish this. All right, so it says I can just cut it even. I 
think they're crazy, but they're the boss of me. So let me show you up close what I did. I glued this tab down so that it covers that right there because it's going to come up against another one, but isn't the raw edge going to show? Isn't it going to possibly fray? Oh, my hands are shaking today. And, you know, I don't know. It just seems like I should cover that bit. Having it glued down does make it easy to just trim. And these scissors are such nice scissors. Or some people be like, you can't cut through glue with those, Robin. They're good scissors. Yeah, well, they, you know, they cut really well and they're nice and sharp and I can wipe them down. This is almost like the silverware drawers you have to put the dividers in. I've made things like this by using the foam core board from the Dollar Tree foam core board and made little dividers. I don't remember what I was making, probably for like a kitchen drawer or something like that, but it's done something similar. It's really nice. Double check, make sure we're still live. <laughs> the AC just turned off, so it's like, it's really quiet all of a sudden. I'm not complaining though, because that new AC unit is loud but it keeps the house nice and cool. Knock on wood. There we go. Right. So has anyone purchased anything from that, that that uh, inexpensive site that everyone's showing at Timu or whatever it is. I've been seeing a lot of craft channels. They've been getting free product from them and then showing different things, kitchen tools, crafting gadgets and stuff like that. I mean, it feels like maybe they're a little less quality because it's so inexpensive. It makes you wonder, you know, how good the quality is. I mean, they have shoes and everything like that. And I'm like, I just don't know about that. You're all still here, thank you. I just wanted to make sure because sometimes it goes spinny on my phone and I don't notice it here. So here's my box and I'm supposed to take, would have been good to know which one was I and which one was Jay, but so this one fits. Oh, threads, choose a fabric that doesn't fray. So H, is bigger than K, so H can go here. I mean, really, you can do this any way you want. And J. And then K's. Oh, I could see, yeah, K does need to be. I put K right on that seam and put a little bit of glue there where I folded the green. Come on, glue. Oh, watch that. Cheat, cheat, cheat. Cheat, 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 cheat. Oh, put some on the other side while you're at it. All right. Trim off threads. Now put that right on that seam so it'll hold the seam. That spot's big enough for a thimble. Now, if I wanted to put ribbon around there, I would have had to have done that before I do this. And I guess I could still do it around there. I might just have to wiggle a little bit. I only glued in those two pieces. I could still pull the rest out. Whoops. So you could, if you were to have been received this as a gift or purchase it, if you don't glue those spaces in, you can move them around. See that? Ugh. I guess I could take um, paint or something, but I have that raw edge of the fabric. I really think pulling these out, you have no intention. I heard that Timu was hit or miss. Yeah, 
I have no intention of purchasing them. I've I've received several of the hey you know sign up and I'll get something for free type thing where it's just a way for them to get more people to sign up and stuff. And I did it for one person, but I, I didn't do it for anyone else. And it's just like mm, no. Okay. So I have that piece, which now needs to be 15, 14. Oh, I guess I was supposed to glue that into this before I did this. Apply fabric to piece G, following the procedures, glue the inner base. And, oh, no, it says, where's this head where I glued it? Oh. I'm on step 15 and I was supposed to do it on step 12. Oh, that's why there's nothing here because I'll have to glue that to there. Position the box on, okay, hold on. Where is it? Okay, so I need to put glue everywhere here. to start with just this and because this is like an important thing I think I'm going to double glue it meaning I'll put glue on the base and I'll put glue on the box so how do I want this to be in I want it to go in like this Nothing's going to leak through on this, so I feel extra glue on here isn't going to hurt anything. I said earlier, I only buy online when I can't get locally. True. I'm positive you have ribbon that you can put. Yeah, I'm going to put ribbon around it. I think what I'm going to end up doing is popping the pieces out and then putting ribbon around it and then putting the pieces back in. Because it's, I did so much work on it. We worked so hard on this, you know, going through each step that I feel like it needs to be. And you know, the crafter in me and stuff says, hey, you know. And I, I should be able to pop the glue. And I wanna go in between the metal bits, that's why we put those on first. Since none of these are glued in, just the little pieces, I can pop those off or just move them out of the way. And then this is going to go up, so I will glue this part. That way I know there's no extra glue anywhere. Because even if I just put like white ribbon or I make a binding strip out of this green fabric and put it in there, and it could be like... Okay, so let's say I totally messed up just because I didn't know any better, not because like, oh, I messed up, I can't do anything right, but because I didn't really know and I didn't quite pay attention to the directions and understand them. Now I can put it on there, ribbon on there. It could be like, you know, I meant to have this fun accent down there. Oh, look at this ribbon down there. Isn't that so cool? Look at that. Oh, I still have the thing taped on there. Look at how smart we are. We figured it out. Oh, I just put glue on the bottom of the box. And the glue does dry clear, so that's a good thing. You can use blue painter's tape too if you don't have masking tape because that doesn't stick to stuff. I think it needs like a little ball on top or something. Yeah, you do what works for you. And sometimes you have to change things and rearrange things and do something different than what the directions say or what the quilt pattern or whatever says. But I, I've always liked the different fabric, poofy, quilted all the way around. You know, the big poofy ones where you can use the top as a pin cushion also. 
I've always liked those. So I can see a couple things where I, I'm not too thrilled with and I'll do something to fix it. Of course, taking out the inside, but can you see, you see how my corners aren't perfectly neat in there? I can uh, just kind of glue it down a little bit or I could put ribbon up into that area. Again, these, these are a little glued, but I can pop all of these out so I can put ribbon around it. I'm not super thrilled with that. Again, you can put ribbon right around here and all the way into the inside. Put ribbon on all four corners or use that uh, heat and bond ultra that you don't um, sew through. I can get a little iron in there and then put ribbon around the bottom to cover all of the bottom raw edges. Just fold over the top ones. So this one, I can tuck it down underneath there just a little bit and bring it around. And I think that's a really cute box. Use a child's favorite fabrics and you know, you can paper on it or something like that. Finished. Yeah, exactly, Jackie. It's finished. And it's cute. I, I love it. So here's that one piece. I wasn't sure what's happening and it almost creates like a hinge effect there. So that's why I just put the white just a little bit and then there's the white down there. All right. I like that. I would make another. And once I fix a couple, now I would use this even for myself. I'm better now than I was a year ago or two years ago. And I will put something in here. So there is, there's ribbon, there's a rick rack. There's always something you can put to cover it. And then even if you had like a wide piece of ribbon that would go up like an inch ribbon, you could put that all the way around and it would cover a lot of that up. So it's going to cover up some of that green. If you match it or have a contrast, it's still. Oh, yeah, exactly. Giovanna, that would have been smart to put it over there. I did not have that thought whatsoever because it would 100% cover that up. And I think, okay, you can just grab the lid here, but how neat would it be to have something right here? It would be a little off center, but you could put something down here and have that ribbon glued and have it up here with a snap or Velcro or whatever, or it goes through some whatever. There's a lot of things you can do. Thank you guys so much. There's a lot of things you can do to fix a little, oh, I'm not quite happy with it. And once you make one, you can easily replicate this with your own supplies and the next one you know is going to be done properly. You'll know all the little tips and tricks and where to tuck this little green fabric in so it's not sticking out there. It's not a seam or anything. I can just see a little piece of excess fabric. So we just go through and we just do the little bit of things and and things come out and you're like, oh. But I think overall, I would 100%, once I start, if I use this at home and I put things in it, I think if I were to make it myself, I would make these dividers tall, make a pin cushion and stick it on the top. Yeah, well that way, so like this one's supposed to be a pin cushion right here, so when it's open, but when you open this, I don't know, is that okay? I mean, it's okay, obviously, but, hmm. I would want these to be taller and come up closer to here, but I guess you need a certain amount of room. Not, you don't need this, because this sits right on top, so you wouldn't need a lot of room. So if these were taller and they came out up like this, and then you could put more stuff in. I mean, it's fine that they sit down. I'm just trying to think, what would I do next time to change it up? But I think that's great. The sewing fabric worked out perfectly. I like the green on there, cover that up. So I need a little tweaking on it. It may have time between now and Whip It Wednesday. I don't know, we'll see. I have a custom order that I need to work on this weekend, so I'll probably run out of time. And I will show this again either on Whip It Wednesday if I finish it, otherwise I'll hold on to it and show it again at a different time after I put in those little touches. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. I guess I could wrap. I don't have boxes to put things in to mail them out, but I guess I could put this in a 
bubble, you know, the flat rate priority bubble mailers, and then put that into one of my shipping packages so it would be protected by the bubble mailer. Because I don't have anyone local that I would want to give it to, and I don't know if I would, you know, do it as a giveaway or something like that. I don't think it's, I'm 99% sure it's not going to be something that goes into the shop. But, yeah. All right. Thank you guys so much. I hope you guys have a great weekend. Enjoy friends and family or do something creative. If you do Easter, great, and, and have a great Easter with your friends and family. But if you're going to be like me and you're going to be home alone, just find something that brings you joy and just make Sunday a day for yourself. Thank you guys so much for hanging out. Thank you all for watching on the replay. I will see you guys later. Hi, Lisa.